Part of the reason why Yan Bai exists now is I hope that you know inspire other younger Cambodians to open up, to connect with their history, to understand more about what their ancestors went through, or just to learn about their culture, to be proud of where they're from. Anything Cambodian is underrepresented just because the culture and history is just so suppressed. No one really talks about what happened in Cambodia. I mean, like the war and the genocide, I feel like it's part of U.S. history, but it's something that's not even taught in school. It's just a really difficult subject to talk about even at home with my parents. I dropped out of nursing school. And so I've always wanted to go to Cambodia, and it's like the perfect opportunity in time. It's kind of like a self-discovery type of journey or trip. Like just wanting to know so much more about my family history, just because it wasn't like talked about at all. And then when I got there, the sound, the smell, and everything, just to be there, it's like, wow, I'm home. It's been six years now that I go back once a year. Most of the dishes that's on the menu now are like dishes I grew up eating, that I crave, that I love. Theo Phnom Penh is a dish that my mom would make every weekend. It's a dish that like my friends would crave. They're like, when is y'all making the soup again? Can we come over and eat? So like our house on the weekend would just become like a noodle shop restaurant where my friends would just come eat noodles and just leave, not really even hang out. There's the broth component, which is made with pork bones. It's light, but yet it's really rich. And then you have the noodle component with rice noodles, and then you have the different type of toppings. It's traditionally served with ground pork, even like pig intestines. And then you have the fresh herbs of green onions, cilantro, and then that completes the noodle soup dish. It's like Vietnamese has pho, Japanese has ramen. We have kateo phnom penh. Machu Krung is my second favorite soup. It's a soup that has krung, which is like the backbone of Cambodian cooking. We would make like a beef broth and then simmer spare ribs into the broth and then tamarind. So it's tart but sweet at the same time. And then you have water spinach and then eggplant added into the soup. So it's a very like rustic country style soup. You can find it all over Cambodia, but definitely more so in Bantabong, the countryside, and Phnom Penh, which is the capital. Banana blossom salad. This is prepared for like birthdays, big celebrations. It's a really colorful dish because you use purple cabbage, shredded carrots, and then the banana blossom. It's kind of meaty. It's like think of an artichoke where you kind of peel down like the layers of the leaves until you get to like this soft kind of meaty flesh. And then that's the banana blossom that you use to make the salad. And you cut that up into like really thin shreds and toss it with the cabbage. A bunch of herbs, so it's very crunchy, herbaceous at the same time, light, and then the fish sauce dressing and then you top it off with like fried shallots and peanuts. It sounds really simple, but it's really delicious. I had a hard time deciding what to put on the menu just because I'm like, well, what if people don't like it? What if it's too weird? But then at the end of the day, I'm just like, you know what? I'm just gonna put like what I love to eat on the menu. Nyambai translates to eat rice, but it's also a saying that means let's eat. It's something that my mom would always say when we would have friends over. So she would always say, Yambai, Yambai, Yambai. So instead of like, hello, how are you? It's like, let's eat. <laughs>